Hi, welcome to SBR Videos. I'm Peter Loshak. This is Into the Weekend uh, with Bet DSI for NFL Week 6. Of course, we are talking with uh, Brent, the headlines manager at DSI Sportsbook. And Brent, the first game I have to ask you about Miami at Tennessee, right? Miami comes back from London off the bye with the coaching change. My sense was that, uh, you know, Miami would be a, a, a good bet here. And I know that uh, that Sharps have at times earlier this year uh, been favoring them. The line has gone down. It opened at about plus three. Now it's plus one. Have the Sharps been hitting Miami? Well, that's why we call you Sharp, Peter. Yes. Yeah, no, the Sharps did take uh, Miami. Yeah. I had a couple of different guys on Miami, uh, plus two and a half, plus two, uh, even the money line plus 115. I mean, it, it's been all Miami so far. My count's very one-sided that way. Money, obviously, very one-sided as well. Uh, line is down to Tennessee minus one at home. Again, uh, plus two and a half and two were where the Sharps came in on Miami. Um, totals absolutely nothing right home about, but the money line as well, plus 115. So, yeah, you're, you're dead on there. I'm, again, in Miami, it's, it's, you know, people still think they're better than the record. In the case, sitting at one and three, again, they were one of those teams that the, a lot of Sharp guys liked in terms of the future. So, I, I don't know if there's a time for them to turn around or not. But, I mean, you've got two, two teams that are one and three. Which one's better? And right now, the Sharps are indicating Miami. Okay, and then Cincinnati at Buffalo is also an interesting game. Both Cincinnati and Buffalo have been uh, generally public favored sides uh, so far this year overall. Cincinnati, of course, 4-0-1 against the spread. The line has gone up. Part of that has to do with uh, the injury to uh, Tyrod Taylor. My guess here would be that the public is favoring Cincinnati. As far as sharp action, I don't know. Couldn't make a guess. Yeah, I've got, I mean, you're bang on in terms of the count. It's way very one side in terms of Cincinnati. Um, mm -hmm. You've got, you know, you know, Cincinnati's 5-0 and overall. Um, Buffalo's three and two, kind of, you know, you know, they're, they're they're sneaky as a as a home dog as they are. But Cincinnati's favored by three right now. But the problem with Baltimore too, you're looking at it, their, their running back situation is is a mess. Um, there's even talk as of today, Friday, that McCoy actually might play, which would be interesting because that'll probably knock that down just a little bit. But I mean, who knows how healthy he is with hamstrings and stuff like that. I do have what I'm going to call pseudo sharp action that came in on Buffalo plus mm -hmm. the three, but you know, nothing at all, nothing enough to move the line. Put it that way. My money actually does favor Buffalo. Buffalo, um, so that because of the the bigger pseudo sharp bats that I did get, but the count is you know just it's the biggest one side in terms of the teasers and parlays and straight bets. It's the most one sided game we have of the week mm -hmm. on Cincinnati. That makes sense to me. And then another interesting game, Carolina against Seattle. Seattle, of course, uh, underperforming this year. They're one three and one against the spread. Carolina undefeated, coming off of the bye. Uh, Seattle has a big home favorite. Usually is uh, the side that I would assume would take a big public action, but because of how they've done this year, maybe not. Uh, um, what can you tell us about this, uh, the, the betting action for this game, Brent? I can tell you it's the least bet game of the week, Peter. Right. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And again, it might be a case where people are still trying to figure out Seattle. Yeah. Maybe people aren't sold on Carolina. But, I mean, Carolina's 4-0 and they're coming off a of bye. That's a pretty good spot. Their defense is, is very strong. But, again, Carolina on offense. They've got Cam Newton, and, and basically that's all they have. I mean, they don't have a ton of receivers to help them out other than uh, the tight end there, Olsen. So it's an interesting case where, I mean, Seattle, it seems like the line's a little bit high in terms of them being favored by a full touchdown at home. But, again, at home they seem to be just like a completely different other team. Uh, and, again, people might not be sold on Carolina. Right now my betting action in terms of my count is actually – this dead even. Mm -hmm. The actual wager volume in terms of the, the, the dollar value that I've taken is dead even as well. Um, I have taken a little more under money, which is no surprise. Under 41 came in. We're sitting at 40, 40 and a half right now. So Seattle minus seven seems to be a, a strong line that's holding true. And right now we're 40 and a half. Again, the only total money I've taken has been on the under. Sharps on Miami, public on Cincinnati, and uh, not much of anything in the uh, Carolina-Seattle game. Brent, what can you tell us about the rest of the card for NFL Week 6? Well, another ugly dog you, you, you might consider is Kansas City sitting at 1-4. and four. Mm. Maybe they're better than 1-4 or not, but uh, the Sharps did come and take Kansas City when the line was 4. Uh, they took Kansas City plus 4, who's at Minnesota this week. I don't um, know, like, man. Brent, can, can I just stop you? I think the Sharps are wrong here. This reminds me of when the Sharps took Kansas City on the road at Cincinnati, and during our call, I was like, I don't know about that, man. Here you're telling us the Sharps are on KC again uh, against uh, Minnesota. I'm going on record. I think the Sharps are screwed in the head on this one. The Sharps are screwed on the head. Completely this screwed on this one game. <laughs> I'm not talking about long term. I'm, not talking about, I'm talking about this one game. Yeah, no, I mean, you're looking at a Minnesota team that, that I mean, they seem to be have a hard time scoring points. They, they really haven't done anything in, in the air this year. I mean, I think Bridgewater has been a bit, bit of a disappoint, disappointment after last season. But, I mean, the, the only sharp action I do have is Kansas City plus four. It's, it's 
one of the sharper sharps that's out there now. Okay. The Minnesota Minnesota's at home as a three and a half point favorite now. I do have a public money of about four to one in favor of Minnesota, so I'm going to throw you in the square category on Minnesota there, Peter. Oh, really? But, uh, <laughs> oh, well, you could throw me in the, in the category of people who made money on Arizona whoa, when they were small. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, nobody <laughs> knows that. <laughs> we got we got to see some receipts there. Uh, this is the case, though. I mean, I don't want to call it a sharp public split, but it kind of looks that way in terms of my money being about three, almost three to one in favor of Kansas City, and my betting count almost four to one way in favor of Minnesota. So it, it kind of sets up that way. But yeah, I mean, Kansas City it just. They just haven't looked very good this year. And, and Minnesota, everyone ex- also expected them to be a little bit better than they are right now. But that's one of the games where the Sharps are on. So okay. let's jump to the next one after you beat me up on this one. <laughs> uh, Detroit. Detroit's another one. Uh, Detroit at home to Chicago again. Mm-hmm. Ugly, ugly games here. Detroit 0-5, Chicago 2-3. and It's like, yeah. I mean, these teams both have a, like a point differential, like minus 55 or something like that. I mean, they're, they're two teams who, who've looked really bad so far this year. So much more was expected of them. Detroit minus two and a half was a sharp play. Uh, my count is pretty much dead, even slightly favoring Detroit, and my money definitely favors Detroit because of the sharper action. I also have sharp, <clears throat> excuse me, sharp action on the total there, over 43 with sharp Peter. We're up to 44 right now. And uh, Miami, we touched on Indianapolis. No surprise there, I don't think. Um, Sharps took Indianapolis, uh, mm-hmm. buying the half point, 10.5, minus 20, minus 25 they laid. They also laid uh, laid the minus 120 when the line was at 10 with Indianapolis. So Indianapolis plus 10.5, minus 20 or 25, and Indianapolis plus 10, minus 20. Uh, both were sharp plays there. And again, it looks like Luck's going to play, so that might have yeah. something to do with it. Uh, right now, we do have New England minus 9.5. There are some nines out there right now. So New England at Indianapolis, the, the late game on Sunday. So if you can get double digits, you're probably in a good spot. The uh, Monday night game as well, Philadelphia was sharp. Uh, that's not a mm. good spot for us because you figure the public is going to be on them. My money's quite one-sided on Philadelphia. They're at home to the Giants. Sharps did come in at minus four and minus four and a half on Philadelphia. So um, just one thing I want to touch on the total of that game as well. I had sharp action going over 48 and a half. Mm-hmm. Also had sharp action coming under 50 for the Monday night game. So we're sitting at 49 and a half right now, and that seems to be bouncing back and forth. Um, I want to mention a couple. Uh, the Jets minus six and a half. That was, that was what I'll call a pseudo-sharp play. They're mm-hmm. at home to Washington. Line is up to minus seven right now. Uh, Arizona minus three, minus 20 at Pittsburgh. That's another one where it's a, a pseudo favorite, where our mm. pseudo sharp will call the lines up to four there. And I mean, I put a star by, by this Denver Cleveland game because I want to tell you that the count is all over Denver, which it is. And I want to tell you the sharp money's on Cleveland plus four and a half, which there are. But I know, I mean, you're going to think I'm shoveling you something when I say that the sharps are on Cleveland plus four and a half, but it, it is what it is. Denver, very one side in terms of their account. Mm-hmm. Money actually favors Cleveland plus the four and a half. So if you want to call it a sharp play, go ahead. I know if I call it a sharp play, I'll get in trouble, Peter. <laughs> All right. Interesting information, as always, from Brett from Bet DSA. Sharps on Cleveland, Sharps on KC. We'll see how it all turns out. Brett, thanks so much. Talk to you next week for NFL Week 7.